Hello and welcome back to another challenge video in War Tales. My name is Heiken and today we're exploring can you create a competitive group with just animal companions and prisoners. This is kind of the concluding uh, video of our challenge series. I've been through every single type of animal and through all of the prisoners in order to bring you kind of the best of the best uh, and uh, we're exploring whether or not this group could hold up with a normal adventure group say if you want to play something a little bit of the uh, typical beaten path can you still have an experience where your end game party is meeting even the hardest challenges in the game so this is as always expert uh, mode difficulty uh, we're going to explore the party first. I'll go th uh, quickly through the skills and then we're going to engage with guards in an attempt to see if we can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, overleveled and better equipped enemies. As always, I'm trying to not win by uh, using the best equipment in uh, the game so you won't see any legendaries. I want to make it uh, as relatable as possible. Just normally found gear and crafted gear really so the party itself consists of uh, three um, uh, prisoners that we have caught um, as well as one actual hero who's quote unquote going to control all of them and making sure that we can actually control the animal com uh, the animals so three prisoners uh, that have converted over time then an archer we do have a bear, uh, a dragon, and three wolves. And I'll come to the reason why all of that is happening in a second. So, let's start with the wrongdoer. The wrongdoer uh, is a wonderful uh, outlaw that we have captured. Wrongdoers come with basic skills and uh, all of uh, the equipment that you could uh, use, but they do not have a skill tree. They only get their specializations that had been removed early in the um, alpha versions and early release of uh, the game because everybody was trying to get wrongdoers. Wrongdoers, however, do have a couple of good abilities. So uh, for starters, uh, this um, uh, unit has looting experience. So the tr uh, crew, uh, troops critical damage is increased by 30%. So let that sink in. That means everyone is affected by that. Looting experience is a quote unquote global buff. And that's what made the wrongdoers originally so interesting. You can gain them uh, by farming uh, any form of outlaws or bandits and then capturing them. I captured one with heavy armor and uh, mace plus shield because that's typically the quote unquote best tank combination and since he's only giving a, a passive buff that's great as uh, well. So we're running with a defender's helmet here um, really low tech from attacks of opportunity or using guard overlay as the um, stamp on it uh, which permanently gives him 30 pro percent uh, protection uh, on top of that uh, he has this honorable trick uh, as again one of his wrongdoer uh, feats uh, which allows him to gain fury uh, over time as uh, as he gets hit we have uh, used the defender's uh, breastplate and have mainly crafted in as much uh, guard that we need to be very close to 80% and then uh, elsewise stacked armor. So he's coming in with a very nice no, almost 900 armor which for normal found gear, not legendary gear, isn't too bad. Got a privateer's roundel which every time the unit is engaged they also gain fever uh, stacks. So over time as he gets more and more hit he will deal more uh, more damage but really I gave him a just basic crafted uh, mace and that's all uh, there is. The main uh, reason why he exists is to give the buff to everyone. Moving on to the combination, we're jumping a little bit. The combination by the crit, extra crit damage comes in handy. Uh, it comes in the form of the wolves. The wolves uh, do have a nice ability which is called pack. If there are at least three wolves in the group, uh, this unit will get 50% critical hit uh, chance increasing, uh, increasement. And if you combine that, with a path uh, ability of wanted where you get uh, another 25 
15% crit and food uh, with another 15% crit in the base crit, you can see that wolves all of a sudden crit uh, over 100% of the time, which is a-okay. And the wrongdoer gives us 30% higher crit damage on each of them. I used color, uh, color of loyalty for them, which is a farmable color. Uh, every time this unit kills an enemy, you gain one Valor point. This group does have very, very little Valor point generation, which is the biggest downside, so to speak, uh, so to speak of it. The wolves themselves come in with around 300 hit points, not that great, but they do have evasion and their attacks also deal slow down and always land a critical hit against uh, slowed enemies which isn't too bad uh, the moment that we're um, focusing on an enemy uh, the first wolf applies slow down and then the others essentially just nom nom it down at least that's the theory behind it so we got rufus bella and apex uh, three polar alpha wolves you can use normal alphas uh, they would uh, then have uh, the ability to deal uh, critical damage to targets that are already engaged but the point is if you really want to optimize it you already crit every single time thanks to the combination of food path and their ability so the slowdown is just the icing on uh, on the cake and uh, they do have also a nice uh, ability any attack uh, any attack against slow targets um, has a 50% uh, chance of applying damage directly uh, or have 50% of the damage directly applied to health which for heavy armored uh, groups isn't too bad they uh, I skilled them into carnivore diet so whenever they kill something they not only generate a um, a valor point but also heal 50% of their own health and they mitigate critical hits into normal hits so uh, standard skill for wolf so to speak um, we move on to the second tank which is uh, the polar bear barely cute in this uh, case i found one with enhanced uh, vitality and brawny just to really really hammer home the point uh, that you have a lot of hit points so coming in at almost 3000 massive hit points this guy is not taking no for an answer and uh, we skilled it in a way where uh, they gain stackable rage uh, indomitable uh, to gain more strength and constitution we're not fighting in a mountain today so king of the mountain not really necessary uh, but we used enraged as well to get immobile and the really the the idea of uh, the bear is be a magnet for as many enemies as possible make them immobile so that they can't really run away and the infused color is going to continuously heal 10 percent of their health that's 300 hit points healing uh, per um, time that the bear itself uh, has a turn so then we move on to uh, continue the synergy a little bit we uh, caught a trapper granted I could have uh, caught a trapper that isn't using light armor, but for the actual build, it is not uh, necessarily relevant. I just gave them a two-handed weapon and they are going to be a glass cannon melee fighter, but they will never really engage in melee. So little improvement potential here. I could have uh, looked for a trapper with medium armor. I'm not sure if any trapper actually goes with heavy armor. Um, we have given them a uh, trapper's cloak for a lot of armor. Uh, and a lot of uh, critical hit. He's now coming in at over 100% as well. He's running a standard crafted um, uh, hood, uh, which, however, does have Pirate's Lucky Charm. So every time this unit lands a critical um, a hit, their critical damage is permanently increased for 5%. And since we use an axe, and the axe itself can hit multiple opponents, and then on top of it we use explosive oil which again can crit this here can become a ludicrous combination over time we're not having a lot of attack skills so i wanted to make the most out of the little attack skills that we have so imagine uh, we're hitting a crit supply bleeding uh, on top of it and then um, if you hit two uh, or more targets that's already 10 percent increase then on top of it uh, the explosive oil will uh, trigger so with the first hit on two enemies we're seeing a 20 percent permanent uh, damage increase so over time he becomes a really 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 strong um, 
force to be reckoned with. But the reason why I took the Trapper was not their kind of melee potential. This here can be done with any um, character that can wield um, a two-handed weapon, really. Uh, the reason why I took them is due to their animal unit ability. He and the bear will be best friends, because at the end of their turn, this unit heals the nearest ally animal for an amount equal to the animal's constitution. Well, let's take a look at the animal's constitution with increased uh, vitality and brawny. Um, this guy is coming in at almost 750. So remember how the collar uh, healed 300? Yeah, damn right. When the trapper is near to the bear, it heals another 700. But that's not all. Keep the healing in mind for a moment. So the bear per turn of our group would heal by definition already for a thousand hit points but there's going to be more so we added a hud uh, hoodlum uh, which is going to be a damage dealer i gave them a tactician's dagger which uh, really uh, when you ambush so attack from behind uh, the target is in uh, uh, the target that it is engaged with will um, have an attack of opportunity. So the trapper, the hoodlum, and the bear will be a nice little combination because bear is going to engage, trapper is going to heal, and the hoodlum is stabbing from behind, and then the bear gets an extra attack on top of it. And believe me, bears can uh, can hit for a lot. So I'm quasi. Uh, extending or improving his damage, the hoodlum's damage, by utilizing the bear. So that's a smart synergy. On top of it, we're running a normal crafted Arcadian uh, steel uh, beret uh, with uh, Assassin Strychnine on top of it. So that means poison units take 25% more damage from, uh, from uh, this unit. And you could uh, bet your ass off that uh, with um, our nice little poisonous oil and the poisonous oil concentrate there's a hundred percent chance that we're poisoning the enemy i will actually um, start running hand bomblets because they are aoe any en uh, enemy uh, loses 10 percent of their health and since we have 100 percent crit uh, with him it also applies bleeding on top of it so um, at the end of the day three to four units will bleed he will have poisoned the uh, main target that the bear is engaged. Bear will get an attack, he will get an attack, and if it's low enough, we can finish with Wrath. So that's the idea of his um, uh, build. It's as good as it gets for an outlaw, I suppose. Of course, he's very, very fragile, so not much is going to happen in that regard, but we're going to see some nice damage. So we have a very, very clear um, team where some people like the wrongdoer and the bear and um, the dragon will be frontline and where the rest is actually going to be trying to hide behind uh, them so we need to um, be careful with our positioning but as long as we can uh, keep our position up this team will be very very good so next up we are shortly looking at control control is a standard archer with infantry men uh, one of our very few things uh, or reasons to uh, to get um Vela back is valorous support where we're standing next to someone and then this is just uh, so that we can control beasts then on top of it uh, we do have easy prey and reinforced arrows i didn't want to make him anything majorly special he will come in with a couple of really nice crits here and there but that's really all there is to know about uh, the uh, control which brings us to the last uh, mm, uh, to the last uh, competitor here uh, which is dragon ball zero the dragon which is kind of the alpha wolf version of salamanders um, came or, or comes with a color of loyalty as well and comes with a couple of uh, oh wait 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 one step back um, i should have said that control has a special ability from the uh, upgraded beastmaster because every beast is healed for five percent of their maximum health um, once his turn ends so we did have 700 plus 300 plus another 150 which brings the bear uh, to a total healing of 1150 hit points per round and believe me the enemies first of all need to maul through that amount of hit points to um, actually get through uh, additionally they can't really <coughs> leave the bear because the bear has uh, the um, 
uh, enraged ability. Fantastic. Last but not uh, least, Dragon Ball Zero, who is going to be our skirmisher. I wanted to um, use not only wolves and a bear, that would be a bit too plain vanilla, so we take one dragon with us, and his only job is to engage uh, specific targets. We need, we're looking for targets that can only hit once, we're looking for high damage targets, and we're looking for targets that are uncomfortable. So I'm imagining something like a two-handed um, uh, hammer wielder or an archer that uh, cannot do attacks of opportunity when you engage. So something really um, uh, along those lines. With almost 75% uh, critical hit, uh, this guy comes in and very likely with Tail Slash and Putrid Bite will get his dodge bonus. And um, unfortunately dodge doesn't stack, so you can't have two dodge stacks on top of you. But the idea is he goes there, um, engages the high DPS target, and will gain a dodge stack for critting. Uh, the target therefore can only hit him once with a retaliation. Uh, he will uh, dodge uh, in, in that regard and will um, be completely immune to poison, burning, bleeding uh, and uh, by himself trigger bleeding as well as vulnerability and poison. So bleeding, poison, vulnerability seems like a really good uh, stack even for heavier uh, hit point targets. So that's the combo that we're running. I think it should be relatively competitive, but we're going to find out in a moment. Let's find some guards and give it a good spin. All right, it took us a while to find proper enemies, but look at that. We got uh, lots of foot soldiers, uh, very nice uh, overall uh, mixed uh, troop, and we're going to fight. Let's go, boys. Okay, so we got three distinct teams. We're trying to get a compact formation. Let's try to eradicate uh, the defender and uh, the other guys here. And let's just double check. Yeah, these guys really do have a huge movement range. See, that's one of those guys that you would want to uh, lock down with Rufa, uh, with uh, Dragon Ball Zero. Hmm, good question. Uh, are we setting ourselves up here? Potentially not. Too many defenders here. And besides the lieutenants, no one can reach us. Okay, cool. So let's uh, get going. We want to hit as many of these guys as possible. And... I believe as a starter we're just going to go in this defender has measured respo uh, response yeah yep so we're not going to uh, directly attack them instead we're hitting this guy and given that we do have so much valor might as well reduce his damage output a little bit. Alright, first turn done. Let's wait for the start of the retaliation. Good. Bear could theoretically move in here and just get all of uh, them together. That would be one option. Uh, we got a heavily injured phalanx soldier there. I'm wondering if our wolves should start taking it up, uh, taking it up, or if alternatively we're um, starting to strengthen this front. Problem that I'm seeing is these guys might move in and 
cause a lot of uh, trouble. I do have an idea. How about moving up? Just take out the main targets, Saiken, and you're going to be fine. One, two, very good. Moves to here. And we're waiting for them to engage. Fantastic. Unfortunately, our guard uh, from the back is halved, so we're not really doing that hot. Great hit. Bear builds up rage. And that guy dies. Okay, cool. Look, we could move in. Or we're helping this side. I think we're helping this side. Wolf moves up. Eats one of them. And I already mentioned we need to be careful with our positioning. I would want him to engage over here. And this wolf protects the hotloom with uh, putting himself on evasion. Or deflection, rather. Good. What we could do is we could take out the tactician over here. I think that's not a bad idea. Hitting these two with um, bleeding and poison. Oh, oh, oh. They had. Ah, uh, that was not good. Alright. That unfortunately was a mistake. And a costly one, to say the least. Heal ourselves. And we're just staying with the bear for now. Good, their front line comes in. Does not uh, survive for long. The tactician is a bit of a problem. Uh, I did not check him and unfortunately Every time this unit is engaged by an enemy, they perform an attack of opportunity. Not cool. We're going to take deflection first. Just in case um, he gets that attack of opportunity. He shouldn't. No. We're good. But we still have deflection, so we're okay. Wolfpack stays together. Good. This guy is not slowed, uh, so we can't directly uh, deal damage to its health, but oh yeah, we got dodge, we got lots of dodge, fantastic. Good, we still got dodge going, so I learned something. The tail slash apparently you can stack 
you cannot stack dodge, but what happened is tail slash critted. We got dodge, uh, measured response, uh, mm, took dodge away, then another crit, and we regained dodge. So that is possible, which to a degree means we can tank these guys. Very good. Okay, I don't want measured response, we're not dealing with that. Instead... We're putting some slowdown on this guy. And... Let's just get evasion, just in case this archer captain Junius is going to attack us. just mauled him to death not even not even an argument or an if when but just mauled him straight up kill cute 80 points of damage okay this here is not so cute um how about Moving to here. This will not get any retaliation. And instead we're staying right next to our bear. Healing him. Very good. So far things are looking good. Got a couple of reinforcements, actually quite a few reinforcements from down there. And almost none over here. As so often, the battle front lines are shifting. Moving up. And we're generating some health. Plus, let's just stay here. We still got deflection. As you can see, we're pulling over, getting our new front line together. We do have deflection, so the inevitable hit that Captain Junius is going to give us will be softened a bit. Okay. Regaining deflection. Oh yeah, this guy takes a lot of damage. This here would be a perfect target. Might as well stay here as a tank for a Falling Soldier or whatnot. Yep, we get a dodge and a free kill. Fantastic. Let me think.
Move into here. Nicely hit this guy. Give him a couple of poison stacks. Then bleed onto all of them and poison. And then we're sprinting as far back as possible. We gave up one melee attack, but I think the debuffs are okay. And I wanted to get our orderly buff over here. So, what we do have with orderly now is... Oh, damn, it was not the right one. Um, should have given our orderly buff over here. Uh, you know what? Um, we're just going to disengage. Yep, took some damage, but we need to keep that a bit more under control. We don't want too much. Uh, we don't want to take too much damage. Even without orderly, we're regaining almost all of our points and. Frontline is standing. Very good. Defender has measured response. We don't want these guys, so I'm prioritizing to kill them. Slowly healing our hoodlum. All right, and everybody gets some health. Good. Look at the extra damage. He now has, um, how much? Nah. Critical damage. Where is his continuous improved damage? Lucky Charm. Every time units lands Lucky Charm, their critical damage is increased. Okay, apparently it doesn't track that here. Continuing to heal the Hoodlum. And then we're just going to stand here. Good, except the Hoodlum, and that was totally my fault. No one really has taken any lasting damage at the moment. Bear is going to move forward. And... I'm not going to recklessly charge into anything. Wolf's just going to go here. Still has deflection, so we're just waiting there. Good. Let the enemy come a little bit closer. Thanks to the um, pre-debuff, these guys are taking a lot of damage. I have also upgraded and mastered the poison, uh, bleeding and fire. Uh, debuff so mine uh, deal just a little bit more than uh, the normal 1% more per poison stack and 5% more for fire and bleeding which means these guys are actually taking quite a quite a sizable amount of damage and we have another round of reinforcements incoming so far we're doing well this is exceeding my expectations Most importantly, you need a lot of movement, which is why 
almost all of the animals have 22 or 24 movement uh, just so that you are not hampered uh oh yep those guys need to die <laughs> And they do. A pile of corpses. You can see this defender here hasn't fought before, but already lost half of his hit points, right? So that's how strong uh, the poison and the bleeding is. No reinforcements from the back. That's all I personally cared for. Uh, how about heal the Hodlum, which is a tedious job, but someone's got to do it. Get the lieutenants, because uh, they are continuing to be not only annoying, but they are actually troublesome. And we're setting up a new zone, regaining some of the Vela points, so we're good. Okay, so how about... Yep, a couple of hits. That's fine. Uh... Not getting him fully down yet. He will die automatically next turn. Which is going to end the turn here. This guy will die. He just deals one more time of damage. And the poison got him down. The poison build really works out well. I'm very, very happy with how it has been created. Good. Now is not a bad time to get these guys down. Now they are slowed, which is good. I will just disengage. Yep, that's some damage, but that's better than uh, standing here for the entire time. And they are slow down. Means we will get out unscathed. good because they can't reach us this guy cannot reach us either so we're okay which means we really can start uh, dealing with uh, the defender We do not have uh, evasion. We should keep that buff up just so that the wolves are not accidentally going to be killed. Good. We do have dodge over here, so we're good. Um, let's see. This would be another crit. Very nice. If I'm standing here, I will block the lizard. Well, Bella can move, and then the lizard can move out. Okay, that's still fine. Bear has taken zero damage so far. Uh, 
Um, hmm. Could move slightly up and then just wait there, I suppose. Don't want to just engage with that defender. You know what? Let them come. We're sacrificing one turn. Yep, that slowdown worked super well. This might be a kill. Very nice. Good. This allows others to go through. Always make sure that you leave enough room so that your backline can access the front line. This guy will not be able to reach us, but comes close, and that's what I was hoping for. Because now we can finally engage. And we're good. Both of you, damage, poison, lovely. There is the extra attack of opportunity, the combo that I wanted to do with a bear, but if you don't have a bear, you know what they say, use uh, the next available tank. Yeah, destabilization, uh, meaning no guard on a bear, is as useful as a waterproof tea bag, as in not at all. And the rest of the enemies are starting to engage. Fantastic. That's what I wanted to see. Good. We're still fighting 9 versus 19. And so far we haven't really taken that much damage. Might change now. Clever little hit. Our trapper is good enough to keep the front line against high level enemies, as you can see, at least for one or two rounds. Of course, he's not a melee fighter, he's a lover, not a fighter. This here is hilarious. Good, more enemies are piling through the mud here. Good. Tactician. And this guy. The tactician actually might be a bit of a problem. But not. If we're killing things beforehand. Might as well just kill him. Uh, 
and set up a new zone. Heals the bear, and we're good. How far can he move? Yeah, not uh, does not reach us. Get this guy down. And make sure that we're very, very nicely covering all this ground. This is the perfect target for our lizard. Can one on one them. Move up. Nice little hit into the rear. Good, our front line on this side is starting to be exposed. Time to heal ourselves by just killing that felling soldier and allowing the bear to engage with another one, also freeing up uh, room so that these guys are just moving in, essentially. Rufus. Moves up and uh, takes a nice little howl. Oh no, he is confused. Ah, should have, should have uh, spent more attention to that. Unfortunately. course if he's confused he cannot receive any buffs that includes your own good this here will be a kill hit slash nice damage and look at that Three, can I get four? Don't be greedy. Three is already fabulous. This here is a bit of an open flank. I don't want to continue that. Oh, you can see just how much more damage we're starting uh, to do. Uh, the trapper is now fully and 100% online. And our various buffs are stacking up so that our critical strikes become ridiculous. Good, this defender will take a nice little hit from behind. He's slowed down. Very good. We have a rock solid position. There's, there's a bit of an opening here, which I don't like, but we could close that with a dragon. Alternatively, 
Our dragon does what I mentioned beforehand, one on one enemies. There is the dodge. And we have a bleeding... Unfortunately, our bite uh, was not a crit, so he's not vulnerable. <clears throat> but we do have a bleeding enemy. Don't want to do anything with the defender, really. So, we're, we're not even hitting him, because a crit would mean he gets a retaliation, and I don't want that. Oh, we do have 500. Now, let's play it. Let's play it correctly and not get overly zealous. The tank really just does that tanking. Damage dealers do what damage dealers do, which is deal a lot of damage. Yep, one of our wolves, Rufus, is now frontlining as well. That's not optimal. New round is starting. This guy needs to die. And then we're continuing this here. Very good. Sorry for the background noise. Someone is in a crappy mood today. Actually, she's in a good mood. She just doesn't like guards. Like all of us. Good. Free up uh, our friend. That's a kill. We're getting Valor back. Much needed Valor. And up here it looks relatively safe, so I'm trying to go for a surround. I'm trying to go for a surround. We could kill this guy. Strike and the bear helps. Oh yeah. Barely queued for a thousand four hundred points of damage. Oh, that's a lot. Can hit both of them, which is good. Because they have the most hit points, so getting poison onto them is very beneficial. And with that lowered hit points, uh, they become a one-shot. Just an absolute massacre. Good. Let's go for the, sur uh, the surround that I talked about. There we go. He uh, took half of the damage to his health because uh, he is already slowed, which is great because that means uh, he's very soon going to die. Um. You know what? We're playing it safe. Bit of that. And... Let the tank tank. Good. And now uh, Rufus here hits. And half of it, 50% uh, goes on top of that to the health, so that was a kill. I just didn't want uh, the attack of opportunity to come back. For safety measures, Rufus is just blocking uh, this here. Oh, 
How much damage do we deal? This is a fully um, 62% uh, um, guard. And we almost got him down. That's nice. But Trapper is really doing a lot of damage. Uh, that's uh, a crit for over a thousand if you deduct the guard. Nah. Let's stay here. Good. We're seeing the dodge tank in action. Oh no, the lieutenant has two attacks. <laughs> oh no. My bad. So that's really not a good uh, target uh, then. My bad. So... Dragon Ball Zero nonetheless survived. Everything is good. We got a few repairs to do, but we just killed uh, over 30 guards. I think it was 35 overall. And I just, it uh, was a breeze. So uh, the answer to the question, is uh, it possible to build a competitive uh, team out of just prisoners and animals, is very much a resounding yes. And the reason why I think uh, that is important is because uh, although um, each of them have individually been nerfed and aren't that uh, that strong, it still is a, uh, an interesting concept. It's not as strong as a like full end game party, but it's nonetheless a, a good team overall. So uh, it is something off the trodden path. Uh, and if you are enjoying uh, these types of challenges, then that's definitely for you. Uh, thanks for watching. That's the last of the challenge videos around uh, strange party combinations. Maybe it isn't. Um, who knows? If you're really liking those challenge videos, come up with suggestions. What do you want to see? Anything in particular? Leave suggestions and comments down below and see you in the next episode. Bye bye, guys.